Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word that is going to come forth. Father God, I just thank you that I am your daughter, that you are my father and that I know you and that I seek you diligently, Father God. And I thank you for hearing me and answering me. And I thank you for our communication that we have with each other. So, Father God, I come before you and I ask that you use me this morning, this moment and this time. And your will be done, not my will be done. In Jesus name we pray and we say what? Amen. If you agree. OK, so um, the. <coughs> Let me go. I was going to fall. Let's put this here. Um, so we're talking about praying women on the move for Christ. And so when I thought about the, the, the message or the theme for today, I was thinking about motion and movement. And um, as far as we can move from our past, move to our present, and then we can also uh, move towards our future. So if you would uh, look at Joshua 1, we're going to do it start in verse 1. <clears throat> and I'm going to set it up for you. Joshua basically is a minister unto Moses, and Moses has died at this particular time. And so <clears throat> Joshua was there. It's like I think of Joshua and Moses' relationship of like uh, a grandmother, granddaughter, or an aunt and an auntie. It's that type of dynamic where when it gets to a place of maturity, you can actually share things that God has shown you that you may not can share with someone else. And it stays between those two individuals. And that relationship is one of respect and it is a mature relationship. So as we're looking at the past, so Joshua 1, 1 and 9, this is God's commission unto Joshua. And what I love about this, and I'm just going to be from um, verse 1 through 9, it says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now Joshua knew that Moses was dead, but here it is God is telling him, hey, Moses is dead. And the reason why I believe he was telling him that he was dead, because in that time frame, there was a, a period of mourning. There was a period where when a person died, there were certain things that you did not do. So here it is. This is God saying to Joshua, now this is the time that I am calling you, and now we're going to have a conversation about the things that I want you to do. Okay, so, so my servant is dead now, therefore arise. So arise is a move. It's like a motion. I want you to arise, Joshua. Go over to Jordan, thou, and that all these people unto the land which I will give to them, even the children of Israel. The reason why the purpose, the, the children of Israel is important is because there was a covenant that was made with Abraham, with Isaac, and on down the line. And here it is. Yes, I know that Moses probably told Joshua this information, but it's something from it's something different from hearing something hearsay and then hearing it from the direct source. All right. So every place that the soles of your feet, look down at your feet. I had to look at my feet today when I was reading this, and I kept reading it over and over. It says, everywhere the soles of your feet shall tread upon that I have given unto you. So just imagine, everywhere that you step, like you got out of bed this morning, um, your feet touched the ground, you walk to the bathroom, you walk to the kitchen, you walk to your closet, you walk back into your room, then you walked out the front door after you got dressed, and then you got in your car. Just imagine this every step that you take, God is saying that is going to be the land that I'm going to give to you. So here it is, every foot, every step that you take, everything that you tread upon, God is saying that I have given it unto you as I said unto Moses. So again, here's that conversation where God is reminding Joshua, this is what I told Moses. Moses is dead now, so now I want to have a conversation directly with you. So I don't want you to have to wonder, oh, what did Moses say, or did God, did, did God truly say this? No. Now I'm coming to you as my son. I'm coming to you as my servant. And now I'm coming to you, and I'm telling you exactly what I told Moses. Now I want you to do it. Amen. All right, verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Now, I thought about this. I said, ooh, the river Euphrates. Now, let's think about it. In common day times, every beachfront property, is it, is it a high value or a low value? It's a high value. So God has given his people the high value. And I love that. And I started thinking about this. I said, okay, even back in our past, God had said, I want to give my children the very best. So all the land, the Hittites. Now, this is why when I think about this part where 
even though God is telling him and he's telling him these specific things for a reason, because guess what? These lands were already had people there. They had the Hittites. Do you really think the Hittites want to give up what they already think that they, that belongs to them? But when God says something belongs to you, it doesn't matter who lives there because he can easily give an eviction notice. Okay. Now the Hittites and unto the land, the great, let me see, hold on, Hittites and unto the great sea toward to going down, of the sun shall be your coast. So just imagine yeah. we're here on the west side and I live on the south side. And then if I go out to the beach, all of that that my foot has walked upon, God says it belongs to you yeah. and to the coast. You understand me? So it's basically God is saying that, look, you can only see the coast, but guess what? There is a horizon out yeah. there. So there is nothing that I will keep for you. Amen. All right. So there should not any more man. Hold on. Let me. I wrote this because I wanted to read it from here. There should not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of all the days of thy life. So the Hittites can't stand against you. Anybody that lives on the Euphrates, they can't stand before you because God said, this is what I have for you. Now, as I was with Moses. So, again, he's reminding Joshua of the conversation that he had with Moses, because sometimes we, you know how you, you may hear something, but when you hear it from a reliable source and then it's backed up from, from years of something, then we're human. We realize that, you know what, there's validity to this. And now God is saying, hey, you see what I did with Moses. Now, Joshua, I know that there's a task before you. You have all these people with you. Y'all been wandering in the wilderness for 40 something years, which only from what I heard, should have only took you my, like a week. So you understand that some stuff had to die off and yeah. die away from and be shed from. Yeah. So <clears throat> Thank you, God. as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I love that when God tells uh, someone in the Bible, I was with them. That's now right. I'm going to be with That's you. Right. Okay. Right. And I will not fail thee. God will never fail us. No, will I will not. not fail thee, nor will I forsake you. So God is telling him, I'm going to be with you. I will not fail you and I will not forsake you. Then this is the type of friends that we need to have around us, people that will encourage us. If you have people around you that's constantly negative, constantly tearing down or constantly slaying little sly stuff to you that makes you go like, well, really? So God says, be strong. Friends should be able to tell you, be strong and be of good courage. Why? Because if your friend can't replicate or can't mirror the things of God, then, you know, you might want to just take a second look, okay? You might want to leave him back there with Moses, okay? So, <laughs> from unto you this people shall thy divide. And I like, again, God keeps reminding him of his word. I love this part. From unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. So, again, just in case Moses didn't tell you, I'm telling you, right. don't forget about my covenant yeah. covenant that I made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. The children of Israel is part of this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, praying women on the move for who? For the, Lord. for the Lord and for Christ. Now, only be thou strong. Again, you need people that's going to encourage you. Yeah. Only yeah. be thou strong and very courageous. God doesn't want wimpy people. No. He said, be strong and be very what? Courageous. Yeah. So that's what we're supposed to do. Take up that armor. Take up that shield. Yeah. Every day, take it up. Right, Look at yourself yeah. and say, you know what? Hey, let me get my affirmations on. Yeah. I'm going to be strong yeah. and I'm going to be very courageous. Right. <clears throat> now, that thou mayest observe, observe to the accordance to all the law. And let's going to, I'm going to think of all the law. Just kind of hold on to that for a moment. Now, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper wherever so yeah. thou goest. Yeah. So he didn't say where you might go. He didn't say sometimes when you go. He said you're going to prosper wherever you go. Okay? You can go to Italy. You can go to Rome. You can go to Japan. And God says if you, my law, just keep it, keep it with you, you will prosper. So, now... This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate, and I love this, yeah. thou shalt meditate therein day and night, yeah. <clears throat> that thou mayest observe to 
do according to all the things that is written therein. Written therein is so important because on the next couple of uh, passages that we're going to talk about, you're going to see how when God has written certain things, that there is a decree. And those written words, they do not change, irregardless of the circumstances that we're in. When God said it and it is written, it doesn't matter. I was riding over the Matthews Bridge, and I said, God, you know what I said? I thank you for allowing me to be born in this particular time, and I thank you for allowing me to be able to see the city. I said, but you know what? I said, there's going to be a day that I won't be able to see this and that all of this stuff is going to be passed away. Okay? So <clears throat> now, then I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 9. It says, have I not commanded thee? Again, you need to have people that are around you that's going to be positive, that speaks life into yeah. you. Be yeah. strong and of good courage, right. be not afraid. And that one right there is a real good one, be yeah. not afraid. You know what, I have realized that I have learned truly how not to be afraid, right. okay? Right. Neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, all right? So, praying women on the move for Christ, right. let's move on over to our present. Let's go to Psalms 23. Look, I already got mine marked, okay? So this is a psalm of David, and, and we already know that uh, it said David was one of God's favorite, and um, I proclaim I'm one of God's favorites as well. You know, there you go. You can be, you, exactly. So I'm going to keep going. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh. Maketh, is, again, is a, a, a movement. So he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I love the part about green pastures is because he didn't say brown pastures. He didn't say yellow pastures. He didn't say mud. He didn't say dirt. So green pastures, that means that there's, a, there's growth. That, that means that there is, a, there is an abundance. There's something that will be able to feed and um, utilize. Okay? So even though I'm allergic to grass, I love this verse. Hey, green pastures. Exactly. <laughs> so he leadeth me again. Lead is a motion, is a moving. He leadeth me. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I love the part about still because yeah. again, in that moment, God is saying, "I want you. I don't want you to move. Right. I, I want these. Uh, or should I say, the environment to move? It's going to be still. Why? Because yeah. when the shepherds would lead their sheep across the water, that water needed to be still. If right. not, the sheep." If they, uh, if the waters were too high, or if the waters were like raging, mm -hmm. the 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 wool would get wet, and now this wool is two to three, or sometimes ten times heavier, yeah. because this water has uh, uh, become a part of it. Right. And once the water gets on the the bottom part, it doesn't just stay on the bottom part; it starts to go up right. the actual coat. That's so now right. the sheep could easily drown. That's okay, right. but we have a good shepherd, so that's why it leads, leads us by still waters. Now. He restoreth. Restoreth means, again, motion, movement. So as I was, when I got the, the phone call, immediately I was like, all right now. And I had, I said to a Macaulay, my sister Macaulay, I was like, hold on, let me think about this. And I said, okay, hold on. And then I, I before accepting this assignment, I did like a quick, quick snippet of, of my life to make sure, okay, where are you, Bridget? You know, what, what, okay. And I said, oh, okay. I said, I'm good. And I said, then I have time. Also, I have enough time to pray and fast if needed. Amen. So, Amen. restore. He leadeth me in the path of his righteous for his name's sake. Why does he read, lead us in the path of righteousness? It's for his name's sake. Because what does the Bible tell us? It tells us the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And it tells us that Christ sits on the right side of the yeah. Father as the intercessor for us. Right. Why does he lead us into righteousness for what? his name's sake. It's so important. I'm so grateful that that's the path that he wants to lead us on because I'm not righteous. Christ is righteous. And the only way that I can even stand before my heavenly father, because everything that I present to him, everything that I bring to him is just nothing but just burnt ashes. So it's because of Christ that I can say that I am righteous. Okay. So, yea, though I walk through the valley, again, motion valley, you're moving through things, you're moving through life. Um, we moved through a lot of things in 2020. We moved through COVID. We yes. moved through death and dying. Oh, yes. We moved through missing loved ones. Um, oh. We moved through friendships and relationships dissolving because it was like, okay, I don't, I can't be a part of your life because of this or because of that. So those were the valleys that things that we moved through. But guess what? We moved through it. All right, through the shadow, shadows of death. And death is something that is going to be with us until Christ comes back. Okay? But he tells us, 
I will fear no evil. Okay? So irregardless of all these things that happens, guess what? I will fear no evil. I caught COVID and didn't even know I had COVID. I had a friend that came by and they brought me Gatorade. He checked on me, called my auntie. I didn't know that I had it. But guess what? They didn't treat me as if I had it. They treated me as if who I am. And they were encouraging to me. I found that I had COVID when I gave blood in November and they came back with the positive. I was like, whoa, that was COVID back then. And I said, well, all right then. Okay, so, <laughs> so I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God comforts me. I'm a single lady, and I love it. I love being comforted by my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. So, now, I love this part. Thou preparest. Again, moving, movement, prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. He didn't say, I'm going to fill the cup. He didn't say the cap, the hottest little thing they say, the, the, the glass is half full. No, no, no. He said, runneth over. I love it when something is running over, because that means there's going to be an overflow. I can give some to you. I can give some to you. I have stuff for me. And it didn't say that it was going to be filled and then stop. It said, overflowing. So it's a continuous thing. So, hey, I love this. Surely goodness and mercy, again, if the people in your life cannot bring you goodness and mercy, then you might want to check yourself and be like, I don't know if you need to be a part of my life because if a person is going to be in your life, they should be able to speak the truth in love, okay? But it also, it should be able to bring you goodness and it should be able to bring you mercy because guess what? If they're mirroring Christ, that's what they're supposed to be bringing, all right? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He didn't say some days. He's this, he didn't say when you get into your 50s and it stops, or when you get in your 60s it stops, or when you get in your 70s it stops. No, he said all the days of your life. So every day. He didn't just say on Sunday. He didn't just say on Monday. He said all the days of your life. He didn't just say in December or January or these little holidays. No, he said all the days of your life. So if you break it down, don't listen to what the world is telling you. Look at God's word. Be in, uh, encouraged. Be restored. How can you be restored? By being in this word um, like we're supposed to be. And then guess what? You'll understand it. I will dwell. And I love this dwelling part. I will dwell in the house with the Lord forever. Okay? Oh, me, BT, and God at my new home. Oh, yes, sir. I, I wake up and I said, all right, Lord, thank you. In that order. And I'll be like, thank you, Lord. All right, praying women on the what? Move for who? Christ. Now, we just got through talking about our past in Joshua. We just got through talking about our present in Psalm. Yeah. Now, let me, let's, let's talk about our future. So flip on over to Revelations for me. Revelations 21. I remember there was one time, I can't remember where the foolishness came from, but it wasn't anything, you know, because it says that um, Satan is the father of all lies. And um, I used to teach one of my students. I said, don't lie to me. I said, tell me the truth. And I said, because if you're lying to me, you are of your father, the yeah. devil. Okay. And somebody, I don't know who said it, I can't, you know, I ain't trying to point no fingers, I ain't trying to remember who. But I remember somebody was like, oh, no, it's spooky to read Revelations. Oh, no, you can't read Revelations. And, and I was like, what? I was like, if it's a part of the Bible, then why can't I read it? So thus forth, here we are, Revelations 21. I hope that you have found it. So now. What I like about this, this is talking about the new heaven and the new earth. And this is John speaking because John is seeing things that's going to be a part of the future. It wasn't even a part of his future. It was a part of our future and the future of individuals that come behind us until we are no longer here anymore. So John is saying, he says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And then I pause right there and I said, hmm, what was wrong with the old heaven and what was wrong with the old earth? Uh, yes, there were things that's wrong with it. First of all, you had uh, Lucifer that was in the, uh, the old heaven, and uh, Lucifer tried to take over heaven, and he convinced a third of the angels to follow him. Okay, that, we don't want that no more, okay? Then when we talk about um, the earth, ooh, ugh, we're here, but trust me, there's a lot of stuff. I think the earth was able to recover when COVID uh, came because people couldn't do as much as they were wanting to yeah. do. Yeah. Birds started to fly places that they yeah. weren't flying. Monkeys yeah. and animals came back to the original yeah. places yeah. that they were. The sea even got to rejuvenate itself. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, I like the idea of this new heaven and yeah. this new earth as yeah. long as I'm there. Right. All right. That's so right. 
so, and it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth from the first heaven and the first earth uh, were passed away. Yeah. So it means that it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't Thanos, but you know, I, the, the, whatever that uh, Avengers where he was snapping his finger and people was disappearing and stuff right. was disappearing. Right. So it's passed away. Hallelujah. And there was no, there was no more sea. Mm -hmm. Now that was the only part that I was like, no more sea. I'm like, ugh. I was like, oh, shoot. I said, I love the water. I love the ocean. I love going. I was like, Lord, I said, really? No more seas? I said, oh, well, well, if it's written, then it shall be so. And I was like, okay. I said, well, maybe John just couldn't see it from his vantage point. You know, so this is the kind of conversation that I have with God. I'm like, maybe he just couldn't see it because, you know, he was lower down. Yeah. You know, he wasn't elevated, right. you know. And But anyway, but we're going to stick with what the word says. Amen. There was no more sea. And I... <laughs> And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And I like this part right here where it says, prepared as a bride, adorned for her new husband. Here it is. This book is years. I mean, so many B.C.s, A.D. years ago. And God is using relevant terms so that everybody, even now, Disney World has the best weddings ever. I watched one and I was like, oh, a little tear came down my eye because it was so nice. And I was just like, wow, great. And he is saying that he prepared this as the bride adorns herself. Yeah. You know how detailed specific yeah. brides are? This new yeah, show, yeah, I think yeah. it's called um, right. Say Yes to the Dress. They try on all these different dresses and, and come out before the people. And then, then they say, oh, I think it's the one. And then the little host will say, let's jack it up. Then they put the veil on and then they put the earrings on and the necklace on. And then she stands there and she envisions herself as she's going to be walking down the aisle to see her husband. And she's like, yes, to the dress. So here it is. God is saying, I prepared this place for you as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, so see, I like to give you relevance to it. All right, and I heard, again, you have to, you have to listen. And I heard a great voice. It didn't say a wimpy voice. It didn't say a measly voice. It said a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. I want you to ponder that part right there. Didn't say it was with angels. Didn't say it was with, no, it said with man. And I know that this is a woman's day, so guess what, women? God made man, took a rib from man, and made a woman. So when you see man here, go ahead and insert yourself, because that means all of us. Okay? And I, and he will dwell. Again, dwell, God is saying he will be with us, and I will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And what I get excited about this dwelling part now is because before in the past it was the God that I am or the God of Abraham or the God of Isaac or the God, a God of Moses. OK, so <clears throat> you didn't get to see you didn't get to touch. You didn't get to uh, you had to have a vessel like a pastor, preacher or teacher to actually expound on God's word. Now God is saying, I'm going to dwell with you. OK, I'm going to dwell with you. We have the Holy Spirit now that dwells with us. So now we're going to have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all, all three dwelling with us. Oh, I, I want to be there. Okay. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself, it didn't say a representative. It said God himself shall be with them and be their God. I will sign up for this trip immediately. As a matter of fact, I already have. Okay. I already have. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, okay? It is there. It is sealed. All right. There you go, sister. All right. And verse 4. And God shall wipe away all your tears. I mean, I remember when I used to get upset about certain things, and I would go to my grandparents, my grandmother and my um, both grandmothers on my Erlene and Willie Bell. And there was something about them, that nurturing, wiping away my tears when I cried. So here it is, God is saying, I shall wipe away your tears mm -hmm. from your eyes, and there shall be no more. And I love this, because we had to deal with death yeah. with Joshua. We had to deal with death in um, Psalms, yeah. the past and the present. But for our future, God says there shall be no more death. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. We're not going to be losing any more things. Amen. He said there will be no more sorrow. That's right. Okay? That's right. So there are times when things occur, and I'm like, oh, there will be no more of that. Right. 
No more crying. Okay? When I cry, there is this, when things hurt me, like when um, some of my family members died, oh, that was a deep, ugly cry. Okay? So no more crying. And neither shall there be any more pain. So this little issue that I have, this won't be here anymore. So I receive that, and I'm happy about it, and it makes me excited about my future. For the form, former things are passed away. So now I'm not missing this, this, this uh, old heaven anymore or this old earth anymore because I see all the benefits of the new heaven and the new earth. Okay? And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and I love it. I make all things new. And he said unto the to me, he said unto John, he said, right. So now this is why it's so important when God asks us to do something that we do it. It may not look the best sometimes. It may not look right sometimes. But God has a way of when he, he asks you to do something, I know that I will answer the call. Okay? For these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. And I love this part. I used to say it all the time uh, back in, uh, I used to say it all the time in my 20s. I'd be like, I am the alpha. I am the omega. And uh, the beginning and the end. I was like, yes, Lord. And I give unto him that is a thirst. So you have to be thirsty for the things of Christ. Of the fountain of the water of life freely. So that water gave me a little hope. I said, okay, there got to be a stream somewhere. If there's a stream, there might be a lake. If there's a lake, there might be a what? An ocean. If there's an ocean, it might be a sea. So I was like, okay, Lord, thank you for that fountain of the water. Yeah. All right, praying women on the move for Christ. So he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. If you are a son of God, you are invited. And if there's a son, there must be a what? A daughter. Daughters. Daughters, daughters, daughters. Now, but there are some requirements and there are some things that's not going to be a part of this new heaven and this new earth. Okay? We're not bringing garbage with us. You know, the, 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 it, it can't. It, it's, it, there's a, a straight line. There's a dividing line. Okay? So, but the fearful, I told you all before, I'm not fearful. So it says, and whenever I see a but, I'm like, okay, I already know everything that's behind this but, I need to pay attention to, okay? But the fearful, mm -mm, not coming. The unbelieving, not coming. The abominable, not coming. I have a friend that I love dearly, and um, they actually... um, Close. I've been knowing him for like 10 years. And uh, with this whole LGBTQ XYZ thing, um, she shared that, you know, this is, you know, her transition and this is what she likes. And I remember saying, her, saying to her, because again, I, I think I said earlier about uh, speaking truth in love. I let her say what she had to say. And I said, well, you know, I love you. I said, but God's word says. That homosexuality is an abomination right. unto him. I said, I don't know about you. I said, but I understand it. I said, I'm not going to try to act like I'm sin free because I said I'm not. I said, but there are different types of sin. I said, because there are sins over here, says don't do them. I said, but then he has a specific cluster, a specific group. I, you know, uh, reprobate mind. And I said, an, an abomination. I said, you know. I'm going to love you with the love of Christ because I said the commandment says love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's all that I can do. I said, it's not for me to judge you. I said, I don't have a heaven or hell to to put you in. But trust you me, I spoke the truth. I did not water it down. I did not water this conversation down with us. And we've had this conversation maybe about, about two or three times, you know, because that's the life that you are choosing. You have free will. But I'm going to choose to love you, but I'm also going to choose to tell you the truth. Okay? So then it talks about murderers. So uh, whoremongers, sorcerers, 
yeah. idolaters, yeah. and oh. all liars. And again, notice that there were everything else is E N G and S. Yeah. Then it was a yeah. and all oh, yeah. liars. Right. Be careful about the words that you speak out of your mouth. Amen. Speak Amen. truth and don't speak lies and don't Amen. speak deception. If you can't speak the truth, just be quiet. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because all liars can't come. So, shall have their part in the lake. There's a lake, but that ain't the kind of lake that I want to be a part of. Uh, their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Brimstone is one of the hottest substances. Okay? Which is the second death. Okay. So, in Revelation 27, and I said if I had time, I would uh, expound, say about this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, because this was like towards the end of everything that uh, John is seeing, and right. it says, there shall be in no wise, and there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth. So oh, God is really? saying, the new heaven and the new earth, there shall be nothing that will de- defile this, right. this, 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 this right. holy land, yeah. neither whatsoever worketh. And again, when I see things repeated, mm-hmm. it's like an exclamation point. God is saying it for a purpose and for a reason. Yeah. Abominations. Yeah, okay? Right. Yeah. Um, or make it the lie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, but they which are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Thank you, Lord. So, let me slip. Check my time. And I try honestly when um, <clears throat> when I went Friday, I think it was Friday night, I played Hokina with my aunts. We had a great time. And on the way coming back home, it was as if cars. First I had somebody lie on me at work on Friday. I was like, really? Um, and it got resolved immediately because they know my character. Um, then when I went to my aunt's, I was coming back, and it felt like, and I had my little dog in the, first I had my dog in my, uh, in my lap, and it felt like the cars were getting close. And I'm thinking, like, what the heck is going on here? Right. So then I looked, I got to the point where I looked down at the white line to right. make sure right. that I was in the right, that I was in the right. center of lane. And lo and behold, yes, it was cars. And I said, well, Lord, I said, these cars are getting kind of close. And then I was like, well, maybe I don't need to drive at night. And then I was like, immediately, I was like, no, I'm not a senior citizen. I can drive when I want to drive. And not saying anything against senior citizens driving at night. That's not what I'm saying. Y'all just need to drive during the day. So, it's a little wink to y'all. So, as I got over the heading across the Matthew Bridge, it was my car, a car behind me, and then this, um, like a Silverado truck. Okay. So you got the three vehicles, all right? Mm-hmm. Notice that I say my car is here, the Silverado is here. Is there enough space for a car to pass through here? Mm-hmm. No, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. It was as if, just like that, and this is why I believe in just staying connected to Christ. Amen. A flash, all I saw was white. Mm-hmm. Normally, when a car gets over, they merge over in their space. This person began to curve their car, okay? And I slowed down, but I didn't slam on the brakes because the car behind me, I mean, we're going like 65, okay? Okay. And I slowed down, and I think the Silverado sped up, and we, this person, went on, okay? Fear not. Fear not. But I'm not going to act like it didn't bother me. Okay? So I was just like, Lord, I said, what was that? And all I know is that I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I remember I went to a friend's that night, and I didn't say anything, but I was still a little shook. And then when I went home, I finally kind of like, okay, you're home now, mm-hmm. and, it, and, it's, and it's well. Right. So I hope everything that was stated was a blessing to you. I hope everything that was stated was something that you can take a nugget with you 
and apply it in your present and for your future. And with that being said, it has been nice seeing your faces. Let me put my glasses on because now you can say y'all not blurry. It has been nice seeing your faces. And I am going to, as I came into the home, I spoke. Now before I leave, I'm going to say y'all have a blessed rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Women's Day. Have a good day.